This is a bike check and kit list for that summer solstice longest day ride that I did. So I'll let you know how I set the bike up for comfort for those 15 hours I was on it for, but also the kit I took and if I would change anything. Let's start with the bike, and this is my Canyon XC. The bike I've been riding actually quite a bit recently. You might have seen it in the video where we did race bike versus real bike with Blake. So it's carbon fiber 29er cross country bike. I do feel like I wanted a super light fast bike for this challenge. It's 100 miles off road. I've done 100 miles on road uh, fairly regularly, probably did it half a dozen times last year, but I've never done it off road. And I've got to say it is actually quite a bit harder. So I wanted to make sure the bike was going to be super fast, super lightweight. So let's start with the things I've changed on this bike. So I normally have some Cross Kings on here, the Contis. Got a fair bit of grip and they're fast, but I thought I'd go for the fastest rolling tyre. That is their Race King. It's renowned for being super fast. Obviously not as much grip as Cross King, but it was absolutely fine for this ride. Really glad I chose those. I actually pumped them up quite hard as well because the, the route I rode is a South Downs way. It's pretty mellow, but there is a bit of flint in there. There's a little bit of rock, so I didn't want to risk pinch puncturing. So I put them up to about 40 PSI. Again, that was absolutely fine. Another thing I changed was the seat post. So I normally have a layback seat post and I've put a straight up one on. So this is the Crank Brothers Cobalt 11 carbon post. I just felt like I wanted to be as comfortable as possible. So I didn't want to be stretched out. So I just reduced my sort of cockpit length a little bit. Bar and stem, stem is exactly the same. Got a 90 mil stem on there and I've got those cross country bars. So that didn't change at all. And to be honest, it's really just the tires and the posts that I changed for this ride. You will see that I've added a few options as well. So the actual additional things I added to the bike, obviously you see the bags, things like lights, computer. I was gonna ride 100 miles. I was hoping to keep an average of about 10 miles an hour. So it take me 10 hours. So I need loads of stuff to ride for that long. Actually, it took me longer than that. So I'm glad I took loads of stuff. Two 500 mil bottles on this bike. Obviously I've got the mounts for two bottle cages. I did drink a load through the day. I filled them up as often as possible. And actually during the planning for the ride, um, there's some good information about where you could fill up on route. So I actually printed it out and I put it on my top tube. So I could just keep an eye on my miles on my computer and then refer back to this because some of those places were a little bit hard to find i didn't want to miss one because sometimes it could be an hour or two between those fill up so I made sure i kept on top of that you can see one of these toe peak bottle cages also got a multi-tool mount on it so that multi-tool it's got everything i need pretty much to save most uh, occasions so allen keys up to an eight mil in case cranks came loose or anything like that and a chain tool super important um, i did uh, put a really decent service in on the bike before I went on this ride. So I checked things like uh, brake pads, all those things were all right. So I knew that I shouldn't have too much to repair, hopefully, as long as everything went to plan. Uh, and then also on this other bottle cage, around this side of the bike, you can see I've actually mounted my mini pump on there. Again, just so I didn't have to carry anything on my body, my backpacks, things like that. Then you can see these two sort of toe peak, well, a saddle bag, pretty normal thing you see on a lot of bikes, but also this is a bike packing bag underneath that top tube. The bags, that's a toe peak mid loader. They come in different sizes, but that's the biggest one, a, a six litre. It is kind of wedged in there. It's probably a tiny bit too big, but to be honest, I wanted to take the biggest one just so I could chuck loads of stuff in there. And that is the wedge dry bag on the back. So in the saddle bag, I had a spare tube and one of the toe peak rescue boxes. So it's just got patches in there just in case I have to put a tube in and then that gets ruined. Uh, and then in that mid loader, I just had loads of stuff. I had another spare tube and then I pretty much just stuffed it full of bars, gels, and actually as much normal food as I could carry. So things like sausage rolls, beef jerky, cereal bars to keep me going. I wanted to be self-supported on this ride, so everything I needed pretty much went in those bags. I also carried a spare battery pack and some leads in that mid loader so that I could recharge things on my computer and my phone. Uh, my computer is supposed to last 15 hours, so I knew it would be there or thereabouts, but I brought it along just to top things up. I also had a sort of selfie cam set up that I could slide into there. So when I was out in the middle of nowhere, I could film myself doing stuff. Um, that's pretty much it. That is a really good bag to be honest, and I couldn't have lived without it for this ride. I had lights on my bike for the start of the ride. I actually had that exposure tracer on the rear, and I left that on for the full ride to be honest. On the front, I've got an exposure Diablo. Um, 
It's a pretty reasonable light to be fair, it's pretty bright, but I didn't actually need that for seeing where I was going. It's just a case of traffic because the first part of the ride was on road, but actually I took that off pretty quickly and put it away in my bag just so I reduced any risk of knocking it off the bars. Then I've got a Wahoo Element, so I use that for navigating. Um, I uploaded the GPX file to the screen and I had a couple of choices of screens on there so I can look at all my data, things like heart rate, time of day, how far I've gone, my power, because I've also got a power meter on this bike, but to be honest, 99% of the ride, I just had it in the map screen. So all it told me was time of day, how far I've been, and then it just gave me a row of arrows to follow. And to be honest, I didn't really need the power and all that stuff so much. I do have LEDs on the side of here that show me if I'm going you know, super high in the power. So I just kept that those LEDs quite low, just so I didn't burn up my legs, but pretty simple didn't really need the maps very much. I did go off track a little bit a couple of times and if I didn't have that I would have had to retrace a little bit but to be honest it's pretty well signposted that route. I think for this sort of ride, I think I've said it already actually, but it's super important to be comfortable so I would definitely try and get out on your bike with the setup you're going to use and actually do some decent like three four hour rides if you're looking at doing a big day out. I know this works for me. I've got the Ergon SME3 saddles. It's their Enduro saddle, but it just suits me. Uh, and that's absolutely fine for me. I've also got their GA1 grips. I would say possibly if I was to do this again, I'd go for the GA3s. You know, they've got their big pad on it to rest your hand on there. I did find that I was moving my hands around a little bit after sort of six or eight hours to try and get it comfortable. As far as back, shoulders, things like that, I felt absolutely fine in this position on this bike. I ride this bike as a two by setup with a DI2. I absolutely love it, especially for this ride. Uh, it's lovely just having that one shifter so I can just go around. I definitely got my money's worth out of that front mech on this ride. I was in my low skiers quite a lot. Yes, you could do this ride on a one by 12. I'm not sure I'd want to do it on a one by 11, but with an Eagle setup, you would actually have a lower gear. So at the moment I've got a 38, 40 on the rear, so that gives me a gear ratio of 0.68, whereas if I had a 3250, an Eagle setup, it's actually 0.64, so it is a lower gear. Of course, you do have much bigger jumps between the gears. However, on this two by system, I have a larger, higher gear, and I did actually use it. I got up to 39 miles an hour on this bike and this ride, so it's quite nice having a bigger gear. If I was to change anything, well, I'd be really picky about it, to be honest, but I really wouldn't. The bike's fine. Yes, I could have updated the fork to a 32 step cast, but that's pretty unrealistic. The bike is absolutely fine. Um, I did half think about if I repeat it, would I do it on a full suspension bike? Some of these cross country marathon uh, full suspension bikes are super good. They're super efficient, so possibly do that. But to be honest, it wasn't very uncomfortable. Uh, yeah, it was a little bit rough in places, but a hardtail was absolutely fine. But what about the kit that I wore? Here it is, my normal cross-country setup with a few tweaks. Right, so starting off at the top, the helmet is a POC Octal X. This is their full-on cross-country helmet. It's much like their road helmet, actually. It's just more reinforced. So you've got loads of ventilation. Actually, you can really feel it. So it was a hot day I rode on. Very nice to have that. A lovely little bonus is for the sunglasses. They're also POC, these are Crave. It's got this eye garage, so these nice sticky sort of patches here. So you can take your glasses off, turn them upside down, and I'll sit in there, and they're super secure. So that was really handy for when I started. I was in the dark, but also there's loads of tree sections on the ride, so my glasses were on and off all day. I didn't feel them at all when they were off. So it was great to have eyewear. Again, nice sunny day. Definitely needed these on also for bugs, things like that. To the top, this is my GMBN sort of cross-country race top. It's not super tight, it's nice and airy. Had a base layer underneath and I got my heart rate monitor strap. Again, it was pretty cold when I started off first thing in the morning. So it was nice to have that base layer, then I took it off midday. Got the nice little zip pocket on the back. Actually kept a bar and a gel in that one. Then I stuffed my pockets with my phone in one side, a bar and a gel again, just so I can get to them on the move. Then in the other pocket, I had a card and some cash. Underneath my baggies, I've got some really good bib shorts. Now I know I banged on about these in that video I did with Martin the other week about getting some really good quality ones, but I've got some GCN ASOS shorts, so perk of the job there. I absolutely love them. I definitely wouldn't do anything over sort of a four hour ride with some cheap padded shorts. Get some good ones, makes a big difference. Also thumbs up to chamois cream, so Sudacreme. If you don't know what that is, Google that. For a big ride, I can't recommend it enough. Uh, 
Shoes, I've got these Northwave Outcross knits. So the great thing about these is they're lace up, they're super comfortable and they're really airy. So all that knit, the air can just flow through them. So in that midday sun, they were nice and cool. Absolutely loved them, super comfortable. Sun cream. Now I was putting on sun cream on my arms and legs at four o'clock in the morning in a multi-story car park. It wasn't very glamorous, but I would have been absolutely burnt to crisp without it. Because in fact, I forgot my face and neck and I did get burnt. So definitely take some of that if you're doing a big ride in the sun. I really wanted to do this ride as an unsupported ride. However, I had Liam filming. That's not Liam behind the camera, that's Jack. But Liam came with me uh, with a van and an e-bike. So we would sort of drive ahead and ride back in to try and get some shots of me. But also in the van, I kept a bag with things I might need in case something went wrong, like a spare tire, more spare tubes, a bigger set of tools. Uh, luckily, I didn't need any of those, but I would say if you're planning a big day out, think about those emergency situations where you might need someone to come and help. So is someone gonna meet you somewhere with a bit of food and water, or are you gonna rely on having your phone to do that? And then of course, make sure your phone is gonna last the day. There you go, that's the kit that I took. Uh, would I do anything differently? Uh, well, nothing went, went wrong for me, it was all good. I could probably pack a little bit lighter, but I really liked having loads of food stuff in this thing, so I could just take the time. I knew that I wasn't gonna get in a situation where I was really tired, I should just munch away. Um, definitely preparation helps. I made sure I charged everything. So computer, lights, gears. Obviously I've got a DI2 bike, they do last forever, but I just charged everything. Phone, spare battery pack for computer and phone. Bit of preparation, checking the bike over, definitely helps. Uh, I'd like to take someone with me next time. Uh, I need to convince Blake to, to do a big ride with me. I'm sure he's keen for it. Although having said that, I do like doing big solo rides, to be honest, it's a nice big challenge, but maybe a two day thing. I'd drag Blake along, that'd be a load of fun. Leave us your comments down below. I'd love to hear about your longest rides, big days out. I love a challenge myself, and this is probably, well, it's definitely the biggest day I've done on a mountain bike. Uh, so let us know. Love to hear your stories. If you want to see the video about me doing this longest ride, click up there for that one. Give us a thumbs up if you like these epic rides.